On behalf of the American Academy of Neurology and in collaboration with Neurology Today, it gives me great pleasure to have back with us today, Dr. Natalia Rust. She is a vascular neurologist, chief of the stroke division in the Department of Neurology at Mass General Hospital or Massachusetts General Hospital, MGH as we call it. And she's also a professor at Harvard Medical School. Um, but in her role as chair of the American Academy of Neurology Science Committee, she has lots of updates for us. So uh, you're back with us. Tell us about these updates. I know we have a annual meeting abstract deadline coming up. Why don't you tell us about what's been going on and what's new, uh, newly planned for the AN this year? That's right, Richard. Uh, great to be back. And uh, I was going to say, just like uh, spring brings new hope, the session, uh, this, the section of the year, a time of the year when we have the uh, abstract submission uh, for the AAN upcoming annual meeting brings a new hope for the new meeting. So for me as chair of the science committee, it's always an exciting uh, time of the year. Many of you who are members of the Academy have received a reminder today, and you will be receiving them regularly until October 19th when the site closes. So we really hope that uh, this year has been, uh, even though an uh, uh, unusual year, has been productive for many of your research projects. And we specifically invite abstracts from across the subspecialties and all sorts of career um, levels. You know, so we welcome neurologists, neuroscientists, uh, trainees of all backgrounds to submit their work to us. Again, October 19th is a deadline and uh, the submission site is on an.com slash 21 abstracts that to signify the 2021 annual meeting of the American Academy of Neurology, which will take place in San Francisco in April 17th to 22. Come shine or rain, we will be there, uh, whether in person or virtual or in a hybrid form. So we're prepared for every possible scenario and I'm really looking forward to the exciting science that will be coming our way. That's awesome. And you know, just for those out there who may be procrastinators, maybe people like me, I sometimes wait to the very last minute. So October 19, 2020 at 11.59 central time, very important. I see just for this discussion, you've you've headed out to the Academy headquarters in Minneapolis. So just think about that central time zone, even though you and I are on the East Coast. Um, central time zone it is, 11.59, whether you're a resident, student, waiting to the last minute, Try not to wait to the last minute. Like the day before is pretty good too. Sometimes the site, you know, things can happen, right? That's right. Consider yourself warned. And, uh, <laughs> you know, there is no better way to actually join a, a huge community of neurologists, uh, neuroscientists, and again, trainees that represent, uh, you know, a large proportion of our submissions. Every year we receive somewhere in the ballpark of 3,000 plus abstracts. Oh. And, uh, you know, the science committee works very hard to organize it. And this year, I wanted to highlight a couple of special features. Uh, we uh, heard uh, the, the rising um, uh, concern with regard to the health disparities, as of course you, you know very well, and that this year we're trying uh, to put the health disparities research front and center uh, through the uh, American Academy of Neurology Science Program. Great. So we actually specifically for that uh, purpose, we developed a new topic, abstract topic. So when you are submitting your abstract, if it's in health disparities uh, category, you actually can drop down the menu and click off health disparities, uh, healthcare disparities, and it will be reviewed by a special um, uh, group uh, in, in that area. Great. Yeah. Uh, one, other, uh, uh, one other notification is that uh, many of you uh, submitting your abstracts will also be asked whether you would like your abstract to be considered for something that's called neuroscience in the clinic session. So I wanted to make a, a, a very quick uh, description. Neuroscience in the Clinic, otherwise known as NIC, is actually a special scientific programming uh, at uh, AAN uh, annual meeting, which includes two hour very focused and themed uh, coordinated uh, a presentation of expert talks and then original science in form of abstracts on this particular topic. So for example, uh, we are planning uh, Nick on um, multimodal tools for cardiac arrest neuroprognostication, or the obesity of neurology, or melatonin and sleep in disrupted neurologic disorders. So that's kind of a traditional, even though innovative uh, types of uh, neuroscience in the clinic sessions. This year, we're adding two specific ones, which are very novel, and they will reflect the two big themes that we've experienced in science this year. 
One is uh, emerging neuroscience in neurological complications of COVID-19. So many of you who've been working very hard over the past several months on the neuro-COVID topics will be able to submit your abstracts. And the second one, which is actually something that we're very proud of putting forward, is neurobiological mediators of racism on health outcomes. So this is also something that you know has been a unanimous kind of a wave of support throughout the work of the science committee. And I think there's a building a consensus on uh, sufficient evidence of neuroscience uh, on the neuroscience and epidemiological um, uh, kind of a um, scale to support that. And so we're looking forward to putting that together. So if you are submitting, please consider checking off the abstract uh, topics uh, within that neuroscience and the clinic sessions. That's great. That's fascinating. That is, uh, first of all, it's awesome. Second of all, that's fascinating. I'm looking forward to the meeting even more. Um, we usually look forward to the meeting for seeing our friends, presenting our research, but I think these special topics, um, you know, with, with where the world is going and what we've realized we need to address and, and really what the, uh, what the Academy has done to really grab the bull by the horns and, and make these absolutely in integral topics as a major priority across all the spheres. You know, we, I'm, I'm in the education committee and we, we are, we're absolutely making these topics a priority. Um, I've never seen anything like it. We, we turned on a dime and we're going full force uh, to, to truly, you know, better uh, the field, both through science research and just, you know, activism, which, which is key. So that's awesome. Um, you know, I just talked to Sherry Cho. Uh, she's doing an amazing job, Neurocritical Care Society, uh, like hundreds in the United States. And, and, and across the world, hundreds of collaborating sites uh, for, you know, for neuro COVID and complications and really doing it like really rigorously. It's not just a case report here and there. I mean, you know, they're, they're, they're really rigorously collecting data. Hopefully um, we see some submissions from that and we see, and even, hey, medical students and residents, bring on the case report, bring on whatever it takes. Um, uh, I will never forget my first abstract. Uh, I may have been accepted or rejected. Who knows? I'll leave that out. Um, uh, we'll just move on. I talked to my therapist about it. It's fine. Um, but my first case report uh, through the Academy was an abstract and, and it turned into an abstract and it, it really turned into a case series. And it's just a great way to start and um, attending the annual meeting through present presenting that way uh, for those out there who've never done it before, just do it, submit it. Any, any tips, do we, if we have any trainees watching, even fellows who've never submitted an abstract before, what do you, what do you, what do you do? What, what, what's, what's the way to the heart of the reviewers? Uh, what do you, yeah, what do you think? think any tips? I think work closely with your mentor. I think, I think one of the most important things that trainee can do to launch their careers is actually find someone who will listen and find someone who will guide you through the kind of a labyrinth of, uh, you know, of uh, sometimes complicated, uh, um, you know, scientific methodologies as well as the, uh, you know, just basically navigating you in, uh, in the world of academic, uh, uh, you know, um, conferencing, et cetera. So I think, and, and mentors come in all sorts of forms and shapes. Sometimes these are peer-to-peer -peer mentorship. Somebody who is a, a student, but already maybe participated in their, um, you know, in their undergrad uh, research uh, laboratories kind of work, et cetera. So there are people who can do kind of horizontal mentorship and there are people of course who do vertical mentorship, meaning that you find somebody who's a resident or you find a junior faculty member or a, a professor. Uh, who would be interested in, in working with you. So that would be number one. And two, if you have a question, ask us. You know, there are enormous uh, army of uh, highly invested in, uh, and as you mentioned, a highly professional individuals working in the American Academy of Neurology who are so um, dedicated to boosting the pipeline of the profession, including neurological research. So shoot us an email um, and we will absolutely respond to you. There, there's a contact email on the website. Uh, where this uh, abstract submission. So please uh, don't uh, hesitate to contact us, including you know us directly in the science committee. We're always open. And I also wanted to mention that if you may not be able to have done some new research this year because of the pandemic, don't um, uh, don't despair. We actually highly encourage uh, publishing your recent work that might have been already presented at another uh, conference. Uh, but has not gotten like a general neurological recognition. So we do review that science. There's a way for us to uh, understand uh, whether it was considered already or not. And this is not a barrier uh, to submission to AN because what we 
um, you know, kind of yearn to do is to uh, actually open up the horizons of science. So we do not want to sequester, you know, some abstracts in one uh, subspecialty society versus the other. We actually would accept your abstract if it's been presented as a subspecialty society uh, uh, prior to this um, a, a cycle. And as long as it's new and exciting in many different ways and the science committee will review it favorably. Great, love it. And to conclude, um, I guess I'm just remembering back to my, my, my therapy days of getting abstracts rejected. Um, and I've moved past it and I'm doing better. Um, one of the big misses I think that I did when I was younger is I, I did the abstract and I was excited and I presented it. And then the paper, the manuscript, it just kind of, um, it just kind of just sat and then I moved on to another project or I then started an internship or I moved across state lines and um, any tips for people that have great abstracts, great work, then they get busy, the manuscript never gets written. Um, what tips do you have? How proactive should you be? Um, you know, having abstracts is great, especially early, early on in the career, but I, I, I w I've lost five to seven, maybe 10 manuscripts just because, you know, too many things were going on. Any, any suggestions about that? Yeah, we say publish or perish, right, Richard? Yeah. So th those papers, if you perish, <laughs> they are never coming back. Science yeah. is very timely, usually. Yeah. And so if it's, you know, if it's not hot off the press, it's become somewhat stale. But I would say anybody who puts enough effort on doing the research itself and pull it together into an abstract form, they already made a first step toward their publication, right? Yeah. So it's, it's, uh, it, it's something that, you know, you don't want it to postpone. You want to actually use the... The, the template and the skeleton, so to speak, the, of the abstract to guide uh, through the manuscript uh, extension. And again, uh, not there's very few uh, there are very few manuscripts that are written by one person. So it usually takes a team of people. Bring your colleagues on board. Whoever contributed to research, um, make an early assignment of who does what. You know, somebody puts the tables together. Somebody puts the figures together. And, um, and, you know, let this be your guiding light, so to speak, in, uh, in a way to the next uh, question in your research pathway, because, you know, I always look at the abstract and I think, or any research question and think, you know, once you're done answering it, you only created more questions and it's the next uh, step toward uh, developing a research program. So I, I hope everybody just has fun. Uh, submitting these uh, abstracts and then, you know, quickly turns them around into manuscripts. Again, neurology has a section for trainees, as you know, for residents and fellows. So, you know, so is, uh, so our uh, students are very welcome to submit there. So we are, we're excited and uh, AN is a place for, you know, for exciting science and, you know, let us see your work. Uh, we're looking forward to it. Great. Well, Natalia, thanks so much for coming back with us. Um, really, really super important. Um, we now know the deadline. We know how to submit, what to submit, and we know the uh, really terrific priorities at A and a spearheading to, uh, to make a lot of progress. And really, honestly, I, I think just push the fast forward button on progress. We're, we've been pretty behind for a while, and now we need some catch up time. So I look forward to the meeting. I, I hope I see you in San Francisco. W whatever happens, happens. We'll see what happens. But um, uh, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll get there one way or another. We're looking forward to it. I'll see you in San Francisco too. You're going to see me or my avatar perhaps. <laughs> exactly. That's the way it goes. Um, great to chat. Thanks again for coming back. We'll have you back again at some point, I'm sure. Thank you so much. Thank you, Richard. Bye.